Hello, peeps. Just checking in with an interesting update. Ultimaker has dropped Cura 5.3.0 beta this morning. This is not the beta that comes with the new tree support. That is not yet available. It's the very first thing they mentioned. If you want to try the fancy new tree support, you got to click this link and get a special beta version of Cura to do that. However, it looks like this new version of Cura introduces all sorts of new updates, starting with interlocking structure generation. So if you are using a dual extruder printer, such as a Sabal SV02, you can take two materials that aren't meant to be used together, and they will apply a special printing technique to interlock those materials together. On Cura's Thingiverse page, you can see how it works. They're showing two separate materials that aren't meant to be printed together, and it's interlocking them with alternating patterns to make these two materials compatible together for one item. How many times this will come into play and be necessary to the general printing community, I don't know, but it's really cool that they've done this, and I'm interested to see how it plays out and what people do with this and how many people are printing materials that aren't compatible with each other. Regardless, this is just another step forward in giving 3D printing more versatility. Uh, moving along, some really cool stuff. I like this a lot. We can now print brims and multi-material on the same model, which is really neat. So you can make a brim, I suppose, in part of the model with one material and part of that same model with a different material. So that's kind of cool. I'm very interested in this improved Z seam behavior. So <laughs> hide seam is generated less randomly. We will have to see how that plays out in actual use. I still recommend manually choosing where to put your Z seam and then looking at it in the Cura preview after you slice before making your final decision. That said, I'm very happy they are actively working on the hide seam feature. And I hope that in the future, Z seams become less of an issue. I'm very interested in this one right here because Cura does sometimes try to generate supports on little details where supports just aren't logical. Here's an interesting one about avoiding supports folding around the model. Not sure what they mean there. We'll have to test that out. There's a couple of more support updates here. And then there's a whole lineup of new things for those people that are using manual start and stops to change filament colors. So all kinds of options here to work with multi-material manual filament swaps. This is a nice one right here, keeping the stepper motor engaged at your pause height. This will help prevent your Z from drooping and ruining your print. And there is just a laundry list of bug fixes. If you scroll down here to printer definitions, profiles, and materials, they have been working really hard to update the profiles and definitions for various printers. And I'm very pleased to see the SVO2 supported in here as the SVO2 is a much underloved printer that is wholly abandoned by Saval. The SVO2 makes another appearance down here where it says they updated the bed dimensions because the SVO2 does use a rather unusual size bed. It is slightly wider than the common 3D printer print bed. It's super to see the S1 Plus and Pro make an appearance. You could have just turned an S1 profile into an S1 Plus or an S1 Pro, but those details confuse people. It's nice to see you can now just choose an S1 Plus. And scrolling back up, I'm interested to see there is an updated CR10 start code. The CR10 is a rather old machine, but it does have many variations. I'm not sure if this start code applies to a CR10 version 2, the CR10 version 3, the CR10 series, or just the OG CR10. I'm going to have to look into that, but it's very nice to see these updates happening. Scrolling back up, it looks like support towers are working again, and they've enabled that by default, which is nice. And then we have to scroll down, look at known critical issues. I find this one interesting because it does say some models are slicing slower. So that's something to pay attention to. If your models are slicing slower, it's not you. It's a side effect of the current version of 5.3 beta. And it does note that reports are coming in that Cura is running slow on Windows 11. So speaking of 5.3, here it is. And it is talking about the combination of incompatible materials. 
It's talking about improved print quality with better brims. I'm very happy to see them continue to work on brims as I find brims to be the most useful form of helping keep a smaller model or a smaller support with a minimal bed contact attached to your bed without separating. It is a drastic improvement over no brim. It's also usually effective enough that you don't need to use a raft, which will add considerable print time and material waste. So brims are my go-to for small items or even large items that have supports with very small bed contact. Z seams will line more evenly. Supports will generate more reliably with fewer unneeded support structures. That's a big deal, especially those of us printing large complex items that use lots of supports. Uh, brims, they're saying, are faster and uh, easier to remove. I'm not concerned with faster, but easier to remove, yes. I do use a lot of brims on very small, detailed items where it's imperative that they're removed cleanly. And sometimes I do need to sand a little bit. So I'm very interested in seeing um, what this amounts to in real life. Concentric top and bottom lines are now printed in the correct order. Well, that's uh, always helpful. Updated recommended settings print menu. Looks like they've added a lot of items to the recommended settings menu that are commonly used by printers. I think that's great because the recommended settings feature has been kind of useless in the past. And I still recommend that you open up the entire menu into advanced mode so you can see and learn all the options. And a whopping new 75 new third-party printer profiles added. Very impressive to see them adding this many new models in a small 0.1 version update. So good times for Ultimate Acura users. Lots and lots and lots and lots of new updates and bug fixes. So load it up and get going. The good thing about Cura, in case you didn't know, is you can run them in parallel. So to update to 5.3, you don't have to lose 5.2. You can have it installed and running at the same time. You could even have 5.1 installed and running at the same time. You'll see right here, I have two copies of version 5.2 running at the same time. And the new 5.3 is running right here. So go ahead and get 5.3 installed. There's a link in the description. Tinker around with it. Let me know in the comments what you think. That's all I've got for you today. You're on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure and upgrading Cura from whatever version you were using to 5.3 was today's adventure.